For the last uh, and, uh, but not least the presentation, we'll have uh, Mira here. She's going to talk about um, uh, her startup, Beauty AI. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I'm representing um, so at Beauté, we're developing the world's first automatic makeup application machine. Uh, we're supported by the Israeli Innovation Authority and we're part of the NVIDIA Inception program. Okay. So I, I apologize, part of the slides are in Hebrew, but I speak in English. So the challenge with the conventional makeup. So an average woman spends over two years of her life applying makeup. Uh, and we're, when we're talking about conventional makeup, it's the type of makeup you see on the right. It's uh, a powder um, and liquid makeup. Most women don't enjoy the process of makeup itself, which in order to look natural, it requires uh, a lot of concentration, um, and expertise. 70% uh, of women feel that like they buy more makeup than they need. And 63% um, report feeling confused about the large, very, very vast uh, offering of makeup that's out there. Uh, in numbers, uh, uh, an average woman in the US spends over $15,000 uh, in her lifetime uh, on makeup. It's not customized uh, to the consumer. So if you're familiar with makeup, it's uh, customization is crucial. You need to custom fit the colors uh, and the formula to your own skin. Um, and most uh, users don't uh, clean their uh, brushes and sponges very re regularly. So uh, there was a research published in 2019 that found that 61% uh, uh, of the sample brushes and sponges had, uh, had E. coli in them. And um, over uh, half of women uh, feel, uh, don't feel enough confidence in their abilities to apply makeup. And this is especially true when they wanna try a new look. So if, if they're using a look they apply every day, that's fine. But when it comes to a, a trying a new look, most of them feel uh, they're, that they're not confident to do that. Okay, so if you're familiar with the sitcom The Jetsons from the 60s, uh, women dream of, uh, 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 at least US women who know the show, dream uh, of um, uh, uh, something that, like the Jane Jetsons uh, morning mask. So one day she wakes up and she puts on her morning mask and she, then she looks fabulous and she's ready to, to video chat with her friend. Uh, and so one uh, possible solution to uh, the challenges with conventional makeup is known as airbrush makeup. However, airbrush makeup is a much less known to uh, women and it hasn't really uh, perpetrated uh, women's homes. However, it has a lot of uh, advantages over conventional makeup. So it's much more lo um, long lasting, it's clean. It, you never touch the face when you do it. So you solve the problem with hygiene and uh, that you get with sponges and brushes. It uh, saves time if you know how to use it well. It gives a natural look. So four layers of airbrush makeup uh, are less thick than one layer of conventional makeup. And it's more suitable to uh, problematic skin, like skin that has acne. And it's more suitable for customization because the whole, all the airbrush makeup is liquid. So you can mix any two colors in real time to create your custom color. However, with conventional makeup, it's hard sometimes to mix powder with liquid. Okay, so the way airbrush technically or mechanically works is you have a needle, uh, around the needle you have uh, some liquid. In our case, it's makeup, but as I will show in the next slide, it can be anything. So airbrush is used in painting lines on the streets, in de decorating cakes and art, in furniture, painting, in nail art, and in uh, the automobile industry in uh, painting cars. So uh, the way it works is you have the color, which in this case it's red, and when it meets compressed air uh, at the exit of the airbrush, the compressed air atomizes the paint and the paint is, becomes like a spray. Okay. 
So what's the main problem with airbrush makeup? It has been around since the 1950s, but it hasn't reached women uh, around the world. And the main uh, reason is it's hard to self-apply. So when you're applying airbrush makeup on yourself, you have to uh, coordinate the movement of your hand, the exact location of your hand in space and orientation. And you have to coordinate how much your finger is pulling the trigger. And you have to do all of this while your eyes are shut uh, part of the time because you don't want to spray makeup into your eyes. And you have to do this while your hand is moving continuously in order not to have spots uh, on your face. So uh, what we're doing in Beauté is we're building the world's first automatic makeup application machine by combining airbrush makeup with color theory. Color theory, I I'm referring to mixing color is in real time to, to work like a, a color printing re a printer really. Uh, robotics, so we have um, a linear robot that can move in space and spray the user space and computer vision. So clearly we need computer vision algorithms and we're in the right uh, spot in time because deep learning algorithms are giving us all the technology that we need to build the, our machine. So the idea is uh, a woman will be able to go into our marketplace, pick uh, the look that she wants, then using deep learning, we can show the user how the makeup look she looks, she, she chose looks on her face. If she appro uh, doesn't approve it, she can go back and, and pick another look. And if she approve it, uh, approves it, she can ask the machine to apply the makeup for her. I'm sorry, uh, this is because of conversion issues, uh, but the added value of our robot, uh, I, I think are, are clear. So it's contactless. So that's, that's why it's more hygienic and it's also safer because it never touches the user. Um, and you, can, uh, you get an AR uh, preview of the makeup look that you chose. And the safety of our robot is embedded both in hardware and software. So our software tracks the user in real time, detects motion and knows when to stop if it has to stop. And hardware, I'm not gonna expand too much on this, but our hardware can also detect motion, uh, whether the machine by any mistake touches the user uh, and stops uh, in real time. Okay, so our uh, team uh, is, uh, we're only a team of three right now, and we combine computer science, mechanical engineering, and business knowledge with a domain ex a makeup uh, domain expertise as well. Um, and so we have a working prototype of uh, our machine that here it's spraying my face. So, and it actually can do a foundation, a contour and blush. So foundation is a whole is a color uh, that covers the entire face. Contour is a brownish color that a, a makeup artists use to uh, somehow give the face more structure. And blush is, is of course the pink you get on the, on the cheeks. And we're currently working towards expanding the application to a full face of makeup that includes eyeshadows, eyeliner, and lip color. Okay, so if you're not familiar with the terms I mentioned. Uh, okay. And so, as I said, uh, uh, we're in this phase of completing our first R&D phase and uh, we're expanding our machine. And um, so, okay, uh, our end goal is to have our machine in the customer's homes. Uh, and be, that's mainly because women, uh, most women that use makeup use it regularly. So it's a machine people want, want in their homes. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about the market here, but <laughs> I can assume you know the market is huge. The global cosmetics market is worth more than $500 billion. And the market we're operating in is called the beauty tech or beauty device market. And it's uh, worth 50 billion right now. And it's growing at a 19% uh, 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 growth rate. And uh, uh, co big companies like L'Oreal uh, invest a lot in, in, in innovation. So we're also talking with L'Oreal right now. Okay, and so as I mentioned, uh, we're gonna have multiple avenues of revenue. Uh, the one is we are gonna sell the machine to users. The most significant avenue uh, of revenue is gonna come from the makeup pods of the, of the machine. So it's gonna work like a Nespresso machine where you can uh, get the pods that correspond uh, to the machine. Uh, um, and you, you'll be able to pick the company that you like. So we're gonna collaborate with L'Oreal, Chanel to, for them to create their own uh, makeup pods. 
clearly I also mentioned the marketplace. And we're go also going to have our machine in locations like Sephora and the uh, uh, malls where uh, users can pay for applications. It's going to be much cheaper than visiting a makeup artist, which today costs around 100 to $125. Uh, dollars. And so this is the, uh, as we see, the, uh, the beauty uh, industry right now. On, on the bottom uh, right, you, you see the traditional um, uh, beauty companies. On the top left, we have the companies who are starting to incorporate technology into uh, their business. And our most uh, uh, close competitors are two companies called Clockwork and Loom. They're American companies. Clockwork already have their nail painting machines uh, in target locations around the US. Loom uh, are a machine that can apply artificial lashes. And they just finished a, a round of 13 million and they got investment from uh, Ulta Beauty, which is the second largest retailer in the US after Sephora. So that's a huge deal. And uh, lashes are very invasive to put. I don't know if you know. Uh, okay, so that's it. Thank you.